Welcome into Hour 2 of the show in the Bureau, the Farm Bureau Studio, Farm Bureau Insurance. Go with the home team. They are your home team at Farm Bureau Insurance across the great state of Mississippi. Your hometown heroes, that's your local Farm Bureau Insurance agents. And also staying connected to you because of C Spire, the number one network in Mississippi. C Spire, customer inspired. Lots of ways for you to be a part of the show in hour number two. We kind of start in this hour off the same way we started the show off today. And that is looking back at the last 16 years and sort of celebrating the career of Sean Payton as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. And all of the things that he brought to that team, the organization, uh, the city, the winning, the offense, the you know the NFC titles, and that Super Bowl championship. Somebody that is really intimately familiar with all of it. Not just a close perspective. I'm talking in the huddle during a much of it. Is on your radio right now on the Divinity Equipment phone line, Divinity Equipment. Madison and in Jackson. He is Deuce McAllister. He's in the Saints Hall of Fame. He's on their broadcast crew uh, right now as we speak. You can follow him on Twitter if you don't, at McAllister 26 formerly number 26 for the New Orleans Saints. Hey, Deuce, thanks for a little bit of time here. I know it's a, um, an interesting time for you guys. Um, when you saw the news yesterday of uh, Coach Payton stepping away from the Saints, what was your reaction? I wasn't surprised yesterday. Um, kind of had a pretty good indication over the weekend mm. that he was leaning that way. But, of course, Mickey, uh, who is the general manager, Dennis Lauscher, who is the president, and Miss Benson, uh, who, obviously who is the owner, were trying to convince him to maybe take a little bit more time and make sure that t- that is what he truly wanted to do. So yesterday just confirmed some of the things that we were kind of hearing from some pretty good sources or people that were in the know, so to speak. You know, and before we kind of dive into some of the details that, that you remember and, and in your relationship and workings there with the team, Deuce, just kind of overall glancing back at the last 16 years, you know, you're in the broadcast world now and it's – what you get paid to do is come up with the right words. So how do you frame up Sean Payton's career with the New Orleans Saints? He took a organization and a franchise from a laughing stock to one that had to be considered legit. With his ability to talk mm. and to get the best out of players, uh, I would have to rank it up there with the top five coaches uh, in the NFL currently today. And so the disappointing part about it, over those 16 years, you only won one championship. Mm. Because I feel like truly you probably had the talent to probably win at least three championships. And that's probably the most disappointing part about it. Yeah. When I look at it, and even knowing him and talking to him and li- listening to him talk, I don't think it's the end. I don't think that it's the end of coaching for him. Uh, you know, I could for surely seeing him getting in on not only from a coaching standpoint, but on the general manager side at some point. But I think his next move is television. Okay. Deuce McAllister on your radio right now. Deuce, you were with the Saints 01 through 08. You're in the Saints Hall of Fame, a major part of that team. And so right smack dab in what was almost – it's kind of seemed like the middle of your career with the Saints is when he came in and took over in that 2006 season with everything you guys in the city and everybody had gone through with Katrina. He comes in in 06, January of 06. Two months later, in comes Drew Brees as a quarterback. What was it like to be a part of that when Sean Payton took over? What was that change like? From something as simple of not having to lift weights in a tent, <laughs> you, you, you got a legitimate, uh, <laughs> you got a legitimate weight room. From something as simple as um, not having to get box food, you got a legitimate kitchen or cafeteria like you had at college, and so. Little things like that you never really consider because you think, well, you're in the NFL. You should be getting your own food. Well, I mean, that may be true, too, to an extent. But if you are investing into a player, then you should want to invest 100% towards that player. Mm -hmm. And we weren't necessarily doing that 
in the beginning of my career. And for him to kind of change that whole mindset of we're not going to be a laughing stock anymore. We want to be one of the elite teams. And, you know, to put yourself in one of the top ten teams year in and year out while he was here to say that team's going to the playoffs. The question is, will they be the one seed or will they be the number two seed or at least at worst wild card? That's what he kind of did for the organization and franchise, and he completely changed the culture. So you're saying he he changed the culture and the mindset by by paying attention to details. It wasn't so much he called better plays; it was he changed things from the bottom up in the organization. No, one hundred percent correct. He just changed how you wanted to operate. He changed um, how everything was uh, going to uh, be done as far as the organization is concerned. So uh, it was basically a mindset, and he created the culture of this is how it's done. This is some of what we did in Dallas. This is some of what we did in New York. And he kind of combined all that, and that's what we have here in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Deuce McAllister on your radio right now. Hey, and Deuce, so – I'm taking a little liberty here. I want to go down memory lane one more thing about that 06 season and get your reaction to it. Because to me, this is when the magic started to happen with the Saints and and Sean Payton at the helm. And, we, and I mentioned this earlier in the show, but his first season, okay, that 06 season, y'all uh, started out two games on the road. You started the season 3-0, and but you went on the road, won the first game that he coached with, with Drew there as quarterback against the Browns on the road. Um the, the next week you're on the road again, you go to Green Bay and win. And then post-Katrina, you had what they called uh, dome coming, not homecoming, but dome coming. And I played these highlights from that game, one of the most incredible out, uh, atmospheres I've ever seen on television. I want to hit these highlights and then come back to you for your uh, remembrances of that particular game against the Atlanta Falcons, first game back in the dome after Katrina. Look out! This is first down. It's in the hands of Bush. It's in the hands of Devery Henderson, the former LSU Tiger, in the end zone in the Louisiana Super Bowl. Touchdown, New Orleans. From Phil, that's what they look at. Lots of them. Morton Anderson, good from 26, is blocked on this 25-yard attempt. What a night it's been for the special teams. Josh Bullets, the safety, came in to get that. And Joe D. Camillus, the special teams coach. What an unbelievable night and atmosphere it was for the first game back in the Dome. You guys beat the Falcons 23-3, to and there was this feeling of, hey, something special going on here. And, of course, it did culminate in, in 09. But when you look back at that particular moment, Deuce, what was it like for you? We had an opportunity to go into the Superdome that Friday night for the first time. And the thing that you remember were all the images that you watched on television, and a lot of them in a negative way. And to be in there and to know that we are welcoming people back for the first time in over a year, you shed a tear. I mean, you literally cried. Mm. And I'll never forget some of the words that Coach Payton told us before that game. Everything is perfect. Every, every, everything is perfect. It was a Monday night. Everybody will be watching. The job for you is to not screw it up and go win the football game. Because, yeah, it's a great story that you're reopening the dome, but the story becomes not messing it up by winning the football game. And even a couple of plays that you just I just heard, you kind of forget. I mean, you, you, you forget about it. Uh, you, you obviously don't forget the block punt by Steve Gleason, right. particularly after knowing what he is going through now. But, you know, the block field goal or the reverse to Devery, you kind of forget some of that stuff. Even for myself, after knowing it and hearing a little bit, I didn't have a 100-yard game, so I'm kind of upset about that. But the overall objective, you had to win that game. Yeah, And, and you did, 23-3. to It was dominant, really, in all three phases. I remember watching that Thursday night atmosphere. I don't know that I've ever seen one on TV that was displayed quite like that. And I, I wonder, Deuce, was that the best – dome atmosphere you were ever a part of there in New Orleans? Or have there been others that like that and we just don't realize it? 
No, I think uh, to go to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, gotcha. To, 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 to go to the NFC Championship game, I mean, because even though, you know, we know we didn't make the Super Bowl, to be able to say we're going to the NFC Championship game against Philly, mm. uh, that was my first playoff game uh, ever playing in after being in the league for six years. That 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 was special. And then, obviously, of course, you talk about it in 2009, to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, that was one where, you know, as Jim Henderson said, pigs have flown. I mean, because that was that that was a moment that you'll you'll never forget because you never thought that the New Orleans Saints would be going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, and Deuce yesterday when we get the news of Coach Payton stepping away from the Saints, which even though there were hints of that, I still don't think I was ready to believe it was actually going to happen. And now here we are. And I go back and I was looking at those Super Bowl highlights from the 09 season. It was actually February of 2010. And at the end, and they've got him up on their shoulders and they're pouring Gatorade on him and everything. And I just couldn't help but think that, you know, with everything the organization had been, I mean, this is a, it's a Hollywood type of story that I don't think prior to him pulling it off as the head coach, anybody would have believed it was possible. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> Matt, he, he, he spoke about us having to go on fundraising trips to <laughs> sell out the dome. I mean, I, I was a part of that. And what, what I mean by that, we were asking people to buy season tickets. We were asking companies to commit to be able to say, hey, look, we want this game on television. Uh, we had to sell, you know, and so, so for that to be the case, it has to technically be a sellout. Mm -hmm. So we were going to businesses. You would get an extension on Thursday. You would get an extension because you had not sold out. The extension would be on Friday. And then you would have different companies that would commit and say, yes, we'll buy the remaining X amount of tickets. Mm -hmm. That was who we were as far as a franchise. When he came and we started to winning with Reggie and, and, and True, that all changed. Now there's a waiting list. I mean, and so a lot of the younger Saints fans, they don't remember some of that stuff, but that is true. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Well, you know what, Deuce, you just said it. You said a lot of the younger fans don't remember. We had somebody who's a lifelong Saints fan text in earlier on the show and said, hey, young people don't even believe that the whole bag over the head era ever existed for the Saints. See, that's that, to me, you know, you ask somebody who's 20 years old, all they know is the Saints win the NFC South every year. That's all they know. <laughs> I was a part of it. The owner called us a high school team, and we had gotten embarrassed on Sunday night football. Peyton in Indianapolis had thumped us, yeah. and he was like, hey, look, that the high school team could play better than you guys. And so <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was a part of that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And maybe a little hubris in there, but he was just trying to get his point across. Deuce McAllister on your radio right now. And by the way, if you don't follow him on Twitter, give him a follow at D McAllister26. He's in the broadcast booth now for the Saints. And, you know, you mentioned it, Deuce. Um, there's been some other teams years here recently, 17, 18, 19, that were Super Bowl caliber teams. And then you had the Rams game where they just kind of jerked the rug right out from underneath your feet. How, how much of the way – the seasons played out here recently. Do you think affected Sean Payton's decision to re to step away at this point? I don't think it's the seasons. Okay. I think it's off the field. Okay. I don't think it was the seasons that affected him. I think with everything going on in the world the last two years, from a testing standpoint, from a Sean always burned the uh, burn the candle as far as long hours was concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they stay there at two o'clock. They have living quarters at the facility because he didn't want guys leaving 2.30 having to be back over there at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I think it just caught up with him with everything else off the field that they're having to deal with. And so, yes, the stress of, of football, that, 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 that's any coach. But sure. the extra stuff on top of it, it was just like, man, I probably need to step away. Mm -hmm. And then particularly when you lose one or two close coaching buddies as well and i mean to like lose their life that 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 makes you want to i need to probably open my eyes and make sure that i'm 100 percent in this thing and you know he just wasn't there yeah no it's it's a, a heck of a point deuce where do they go from here do you, and i know it's early i look i know he just announced he's stepping away yesterday but what do you think is next for the saints 
Well, I think the odds on favorite is obviously Dennis Allen, you know, uh, to be able to take over. Uh, I know that, you know, a couple guys, uh, Eric Benjamin will probably get an interview. Coach Flores will probably get an interview. You also have, uh, your, your defensive back coach, Chris Richard will, will, will get an interview. And, you know, Aaron Glenn are a couple that will get an interview. And so, 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 so Mickey's job is to be able to acquire information and to find the best fit. You know, because I know a lot of people are saying, hey, look, why not just start completely over? That's, that's not his mentality. Ms. Benson is not going to allow that to happen. Uh, they will be competitive. They won't be in a fire sale where they just trade and get rid of a couple guys to, to go all the way completely young. I've seen that a little bit. They're going to be competitive. Now, will you lose a few players? Of course. You got, you, that was whether Sean was there or not. You've got to get your, your quarterback situation handled. You've got to get that position solved, and then you, you'll get your cap. They'll re-sign some guys or restructure two or three contracts, and they will be able to get under the cap. So uh, they'll be competitive, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see what true direction they do go in. Is it a pretty safe assumption that whoever the coach is, the team and the organization is going to go to the draft in April and take a quarterback in that first round? Is that Am I, am I okay to assume that? Uh, I would watch what they do in free agency. Okay. I mean, because his philosophy is always, and this is Mickey's and Sean, let's pick the best player available. Let's not pigeonhole ourselves where we have to go and pick a certain player. If the best player available is a quarterback, then of course that's what the moves that they make. But I think the free agency will say a lot of what they end up doing as well. Okay, so if we were to go like full internet message board then, Deuce, um, with Sean Payton stepping away, we don't know who's going to step in, but is there some possibility that there are conversations between, I don't know, somebody who could be the coach of the Saints and Aaron Rodgers, just just to bring up a name? Uh, yes and no. For Aaron, I don't think the fit is there anymore without okay. Sean. Okay. Uh, you know, even for a, 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 a Russell Wilson. The, the, the draw was Sean. The draw was to play for Sean Payton. And, I mean, unless you're just bringing in, you know, you know their, their OC, I don't know if the fit is there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, see, and that's what I was – that's kind of just, again, I said internet message board because you're sitting there going, okay, well, what if there was a strong connection, let's just say, with Aaron Rodgers' agent, where you get word in the front office, look, if we hire the right guy, not that we would let – some free agent pick our head coach, but if we hire the right guy, we got a real shot to maybe bring him in. I, I guess what I was just you know speculating is I wonder yeah, if course. that kind of thing would affect the decision on the coach. I doubt it because the problem becomes from a compensation standpoint to those other teams. Will they accept you know two first rounders? Will yeah. they trade in the division? Uh, and, and so I just don't see mm-hmm. them going that far out. Uh, they, they're, they're going to find the right fit for the organization. And then if it happens to fall right from that standpoint, oh, he also represents X player, then it, 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 it goes in that direction. But I, I don't see them brokering a deal, not knowing from a compensation standpoint that that's already worked out. Sure. Deuce, do you think that uh, the, the coach that steps in there, you think he's already up against it a little bit? from an expectation standpoint, having to step in for a guy with a legacy at at, at the Saints like Sean Payton? I mean, if, if from a fan 100%. and excitement standpoint? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. 100% he's up against it. And, 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 and that's one of the things that, you know, you have to have a guy that's comfortable in his skin that knows that and understands that as well. He's up against it. And so every every move will be mocked. Every move, every, you know, decision will be mocked. No doubt about that. And then here's the other thing also, uh, just from a rumor mill standpoint. Uh, if he doesn't go and he says he's not coaching, we never know what may happen. He's not coaching this year. Whether he does or not, the Saints still own his rights for the next three years as far as salary is concerned and uh, contract is concerned. It doesn't go away if he doesn't coach. It just resets. It holds. And so um, a team would literally have to trade picks and or players and or cash yeah. to be able to acquire Sean Payton from the New Orleans Saints. That's whether he coaches this year, whether he doesn't coach next year, whether he doesn't coach in two years. 
it, it doesn't change. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, Deuce, speaking of the Internet, you know, Cowboys fans are already trying to figure out what, how many first-round picks they'd have to give up in the future years to get him to come coach them. You know, and that's been the speculation, too, because, you know, there was some connection there. But I know that's uh, – some water's well, got to go out uh, of And I 100% I, I agree. But I can guarantee that it, uh, it would take – you're talking at least a starting point of probably two first rounders, two second rounders, and, and some type of starting player. Mm-hmm. And I've come into that, you know, uh, publicly, and that's just not hearsay. That, that's, <laughs> uh, that's knowing pretty good at least where the conversation would have to start. How about that? And that is a truckload of assets for sure. Uh, no doubt. 100%. <laughs> I mean, it really is. As long as they don't trade broadcasters, Deuce. We don't want we don't want you having to go do somebody else's games. Thank you, buddy. I really do appreciate your time today very, very much. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you for having me. All right, talk to you soon. That's Deuce McAllister.